that means I can do my business, I can shave, I can brush my teeth, and get clean at the same time by having a shower. Don't waste any time. It's like literally the best thing ever and yeah. easy cleanup. Hey Loud Winners, it's Loudy6 here with another video and uh, we thought it would be kind of interesting because we've been here so long to talk about the differences between Chinese houses mm -hmm. or Chinese apartments rather and compare them to Western houses or Western apartments or American apartments specifically, right? Yeah. So we figured we'd give you a top 10 list about the weirdest things or the things that are different about living in a Chinese apartment. Number 10, concrete walls. Every single time when I go to visit their family, the wall, I can't stand it. I always need to knock on it. It's just so not solid. It's yep. made of wood. My mom thought you were a psychopath because you kept knocking on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> but they're completely concrete here. And what that means is that they're usually pretty soundproof. Mm -hmm. Now the issue with being soundproof is that when a noise touches that concrete, it resonates through the entire building. Like, kacha, 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 kacha. And that, like when people are renovating and knocking down walls and drilling and stuff, it's through the entire thing. It shakes you to the core. One of the really bad things, other than, you know, old ladies chopping vegetables at 6 a.m., is actually when there's earthquakes and earthquakes happen, these concrete buildings collapse and everyone dies. Don't be so negative. We have no earthquake here. No, no, not here. Oh, here. I was going to say, I think <laughs> Sichuan people might get a little angry at you. And also in Woodhouse, I always will feel really insecure. Why? For example, what if a bad, strong dude tried to like kick the door and try to like bust in? And also like, what if I'm, I have, like, there's a bear, like just one slap of the, the whole whole house is gonna blow away. What is this, the three little pigs? What's wrong with you? I mean like at least here, you can try, you can't bust in. I, I'm okay. One thing also about concrete, and I'll mention this, is there's no heaters in southern China, past the Yangtze River, so in winter, although we live in the super hot jungle, like in the winter, I can't get down to like, you know, 40, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which doesn't sound that bad, but when you have no heating, the concrete buildings keep it cold and it's freezing. There's no way to get away from the heat. Um, if you go up north, obviously they have heating, so that's not an issue, but down here it gets pretty freezing in the winter, but it does keep it cooler in the summer, which is good. I didn't notice that. Oh, you didn't go to science class, obviously. <laughs> Number nine, no dishwashers. Oh my God, that's one of the worst things. I actually completely gave up doing dishes because of this. Really? Yeah, it's you just no need. never even able to wash dishes. Okay, well, give me a dishwasher, I'll be able to pull it out. Yeah, every single time you wash, one dish definitely have one layers of like vegetable or this and that What's this, Why is this channel always exposing me? Anyway, long story short, there are no dishwashers in China. And when I say that, yes, you can buy them, but I would say 99% of people don't have dishwashers. They do everything by hand. Yeah. It's probably gonna get more popular in the future, I'm assuming, because washing dishes sucks, but one of the worst things is that when you do dishes by hand, like everyone does here, most people, some people, but most people don't hook up their water heater to their faucet, so it's just cold water. So it's dead of winter, you're washing dishes. Last thing you wanna do is have cold water all over your hands. <laughs> it's awful, get chapped hands and stuff. Back then, we need to boil water to do that. Yeah, you boil the water first and then use that water to wash the dishes. Yeah. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Number eight, everyone's got a dish disinfector. I probably have to explain what that is. So basically, instead of a dishwasher, after you wash dishes by hand, you put it in this drying rack and it heats it up to a point where all the germs are killed, it's right? It's not only heats it up, they have like a zi shen to do that. <laughs> anyway. In Chinese, directly translate called purple outside. Ultraviolet light. <laughs> so they have ultraviolet light inside of these, if you have a fancy one. Usually they just heat them up and get rid of all the germs because they think that if you didn't, if you wash them by hands, you obviously didn't kill all the germs, which is true. So you have this redundant piece of tech in your uh, in your kitchen that wastes space like crazy. Why waste space? No, no. Listen. Also equal to like you put your like dishes in a safe place that don't get dirt and stuff. Yeah, it's called a cupboard. Um, one of the wedding gifts, the, one of the first wedding gifts we got from your parents was actually a dish disinfector, but it looks identical 
to a dishwasher. So I was super pumped. I was like, I wow, I they, you were so happy. they love us. And I looked at, I still even thought it was until I like really, really looked closely. Now I found out actually it just heats it up and I still have to wash things by hand. What you've actually done is given me another step to the dishwashing process. Not super happy about that. I remember you even dream about take it off. <laughs> yeah, I actually wanted to get rid of it and put it on the side of the road. Really, really made me angry. <laughs> Number seven, no clothes dryer. Another another drying <laughs> mishap here in China. They don't have clothes dryers, so they have laundry machines where they wash their clothes, but they don't have a drying machine, so you have to do what? Yeah, we need to hang it because we believe in the sun can get rid of the germ. Yeah, I mean, a lot of Westerners do that as well, especially in the summertime. They need to hang up a big blanket that doesn't fit in the dryer. But it's super convenient to be able to have a dryer because it gets rid of the germs because it super heats it up. And number two, it's much, much quicker. So if I need to wash a shirt and dry it really quickly so I can wear it, I can do that. Here I have to wait two days because it's so damn humid. Nah, -uh, sun's do the best. <sighs> Any Another thing, actually, now that we're talking about washing machines, why can't you wash your socks and underwear in the same load? I don't understand. Because this have germ. You're gonna make me sick. I don't think that's how it works. You use it laundry detergent does. that kills the germs. It does. Also, you don't let me wash my uh, shoes in the washing that's machine. That's even, even worse. They're just by themselves. Germ. It have germ. It's gross. Number six, no carpeted floors. Why? Because it's really like polluted and dusty here. So like we would. Do you remember when we just moved to the new house, we bought a really expensive yeah, one? Yeah, a rug, yeah. Yeah, and like I clean it every day, I vacuum it, and I just like it's, try to get rid of a little, little, little garbage from there. I used to get bit by bugs by sitting yeah, in that I thing. Know. I don't know what it is about this place. We kept it clean as a bean, but for some reason it just kept accumulating filth. Yeah. Probably has something to do with the kind of fairly dirty environment around here. And we're living in a big city in China, what do you expect, mm -hmm. right? So we actually ended up getting rid of that. And yeah, people use mops to clean their floors every single day in China. Yeah, I need to use the mop to clean the floor every day, but still water is black. Yeah, it's still every single time it's dirty. You yeah, can't get away from your it. Your mom can never understand that. Though. Yeah, because we used to vacuum our house at home in America just once a week. Yeah, I, when I tell her that like our housework gets like every single day, she's like, no, you can do it one week per day. Thankfully, it's fairly small. Yeah. <laughs> Number five, wet bathroom. Wet bathrooms. Now this sounds gross and this shocks everyone that comes to visit me from America or abroad. Is they go into the bathroom and they're like, how do I take a shower? The toilet's right there. As if that's some sort of barrier to cleaning yourself. Why don't you do them at the same time? Yeah. It's the best thing ever. In China, the bathroom is one unit. So the bathtub and the shower are not separate from anything in there. So basically you get the entire bathroom wet every time you take a shower. That means I can do my business, I can shave, I can brush my teeth, and get clean at the same time by having a shower. Don't waste any time. It's like literally the best thing ever, and yeah. easy cleanup right afterwards. Something gets dirty in your bathroom, hose it down. It's pretty amazing. You literally stay in the bathroom like forever. I wish we have to. The reason that most Westerners, I think, don't do this is that a bathroom is not necessarily a place only for cleaning yourself. It's actually a place where you get stuff done, so like you can do your makeup and there's magazines in there. Sometimes they're carpeted as well, oftentimes not. So if anything got wet in there, it would be mildewy and it would be a mess, right? I mean, I remember like my mom would say, what's wrong with you every time you get out of the shower, the floor is completely wet. Here it's like, hell yeah it is, of course it's wet, you know. Nice to try the floor though. You're very nice. Number four, squat toilets or pit toilets. Now why do you guys still use those? Because that's the way we go to bathroom. Yeah, but I think all humans go to the bathroom the same way, right? We squat. Well, obviously, but why do you not use a, a nice, comfortable porcelain throne? No, like, like our doctor told us it's way better for hemorrhoids and way easy to come out and just... Way not, better for your hemorrhoids? What if you don't have hemorrhoids? Just better for your flowers. What is... Oh, God. Flower. <laughs> In Chinese, it's slang for flower, which means juhua, chrysanthemum, because it looks like a butthole. Let's keep this clean, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're literally making it the dirtiest episode we've ever done. The thing is like, since birth, they're not birth, since they can walk, they're perfecting the skill of being able to squat. And the squat is a difficult thing to learn because your Achilles tendon, if you don't ever have that motion, gets really, really tense and you can't really go all the way down. You know what? It's 
Because you Westerner don't have that training. Look at our baby. She mm. can already bend her feet and stuff. I it learned. Just... I learned. Yeah. It took me a long time though. I, I like to call it the Lao Wai hold. It means the foreigner hold. You go in the bathroom, you, you're scrambling immediately, especially if you have diarrhea, to find something to hold on to. And if there's nothing, you're like bracing yourself against the <laughs> toilet, like holding on, balancing. It can get uh, pretty brown and pretty messy in there at times. But you learn. I they'd say the first stage is you learn to take off your pants as soon as you go in the stall. <laughs> Number three, drinking water from the tap. Now, a lot of subscribers got angry at me for one of the episodes that we did because they said a lot of Americans don't drink water from the tap. It's not the point. What I'm talking about is you can drink water from the tap. Yeah, you might believe in all this kind of crazy stuff like, oh, there's metal and fluoride and all this kind of stuff in my water, but you're not going to die from drinking it a few times. My point is that you're able to do that, whereas in China, you absolutely cannot drink the tap water. You'll get sick. You, I've had dysentery before. Um, I've been, you know, had really painful cramping diarrhea for weeks. We've talked about diarrhea a lot in this episode, haven't we? <laughs> for weeks and weeks on end because of accidentally drinking some of the water, especially when I got here. Eventually you get used to it, but you can't like really build up a super big tolerance to tap water here because you never know what's going to be in it. So the difference, obviously that's a difference in, not in the house, but in people's behavior. The difference in the house is that we have to order water once every couple days from the water guy, as we call him. We call him on the phone. We give him a little coupon, you buy a book of coupons. Mm -hmm. He brings a full jug of water, kind of like you'd see in a water cooler. Mm -hmm. But most people don't use water coolers because they're too slow. So what we have is this little machine and you push the button and it puts a little pipe in it and squirts it out into a bottle, into a cup, and you have your drinking water. But also Chinese people like to have a kettle or a boiling water machine in there. We has to have that, like other than, if not, how can we drink warm water? Yeah, exactly, because you know, you know how it is. It's good for digestion. I don't need to go into this. No more digestion. <laughs> Number two, no ovens. No ovens. Now this pissed me off royally when I moved here because I wanted to bake stuff. I love cooking. I absolutely love cooking. I'm a pretty cool husband in that respect. Yeah? But I like to bake stuff like pizza and cakes and ziti and lasagna and all that kind of stuff. Italian food, a lot of it's baked. But I couldn't find it for the life of me, especially before people bought stuff on the internet when I got here. Couldn't find a freaking oven. I couldn't find it. And why is that? really especially like my parents. You gotta explain what that is. Ru qi means that your qi, Chinese people believe in qi, there's all different sectors of qi. And if it's too hot, then you get things like acne, your throat starts hurting, your lips puff out. It's gonna make no sense to you if you haven't watched our other videos. Ovens are not harmful to your health, but they are very, very difficult to find here in well, China. Because it's not our style of cooking. True, I'd say most food is cooked, in, steamed or it's cooked in a wok with lots and lots of oil. Also steamers, you'll find steamers in everyone's house here. Mm -hmm. And another one is rice cookers, which mm. are used for literally everything. You can put chickens in them. Your dad cooked a chicken in a rice cooker, a whole yeah, one. Yeah, that's delicious. It's kind of China, China's answer to the crock pot. We have like slow cookers, kind of like that. You can't even cook uh, bread with the rice cooker. Don't do that. It's so terrible. Look at this little oven that I managed to pick up. And I, I cook everything from pizza to cake and all kinds of breads and stuff like that inside of it. And that is literally what I had to resort to. Another thing that I noticed that's super common that we have and I've seen in every house are electric hot plates. Mm -hmm. And they're usually used to boil water or to steam stuff. It <laughs> reminds me of science class in high school. Number one, feng shui. Oh God, I love China, but this kind of stuff makes me like nauseated. But <laughs> you, when we talked about this video, managed to convince me that feng shui is not all about some mystical luck stuff. It actually has useful purposes. You, you changed know, my mind. You know what actually to me is like, I'm not fully trust feng shui, but I do believe some of the, the thing because it actually can prove it. For example, every single but uh, every single Chinese, if they try to buy the house, the first thing they actually ask it's about the direction of right. the balcony and the living room where it faces. So it's all about the direction. So they say if it points south. Yeah, it better. points south is the best because like imagine in hot summer, mm -hmm. so uh, usually the south, the, the sun is like not that strong. It's not direct, right? Yeah, not direct. It's like the whole house is cooler and your furniture is not. Yeah, because you're telling me burn. people like are worried that their furniture is going to get burned. Yeah. So, so anyway, I thought that was really interesting. So it's about direction. It's not all yeah. about mystical dragons and stuff. 
Yeah, of course not. Like, feng shui actually come from some reasonable thing. I understand. So I hope you enjoyed this list of things that are different about Chinese apartments. And if you want to leave a comment down below and tell us how your house in or apartment in your country is, mm -hmm. is different from America or the West or China, let us know. And I hope you enjoyed the video, Lao winners. And I will catch you on the next time. Next one. Sorry.